What's up guys? Welcome back to another Mike Me and Their Music video. Got Dracula here. Uh, even though he's not going to be saying much today, I just feel more comfortable with him, you know? Uh, but anyway, today I wanted to talk about three solos that are extremely emotional and they always get me amped up. Literally, every, pretty much every single time I have a gig, guaranteed I've watched all three of these solos beforehand just to get amped up, to get in the zone. So before I get into what those are, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what makes a great solo great. And obviously there's a lot of personal taste that comes into it. So obviously these are solos that I think are great, but I think that you'll think they're great too. So if we really break it down, there's two aspects to what make a solo great. And the first is technical ability, technical skill, technical prowess, however you want to say it. And the second is emotion. They come in varying degrees. So for example, I have a, I have a 12 year old student that I teach who's just now getting into Nirvana and uh, every week he's coming in with new like Kurt Cobain solos that he's learned and it really, I, I used to really love Nirvana as well. I mean, I still do, I guess. Kurt Cobain's solos are, you know, maybe a one or two on the technical skill, but like eight or nine on the emotional content. And you could always just really feel, even though it almost felt like he was fighting against the guitar, that his solos were very, very emotional. That's something that has always stuck with me. So here are the, here are the parameters of what I consider kind of an underrated solo. I'm not touching anything like Stairway to Heaven or Hotel California or Comfortably Numb. I feel like those are all just like the mega staples of epic guitar solos. We all should know, at least listen, have listened to those and form our own opinions on them, whatever, but all three of those are extreme pinnacles of greatness in my opinion. However, they're not underrated because pretty much everyone has heard them. So anyway, the first solo is by Warren Haynes. He's playing with Dave Matthews Band in Central Park and uh, they're doing a cover, I think of a Neil Young song. I could be wrong on that, um, but it's called Cortez the Killer. He has very minimal effects. It's just, it sounds like it's just him plugged into his Les Paul plugged into a Marshall amp. I could be wrong on that too. But his technique is good. It's not virtuoso necessarily, but his emotional content is so strong. It gives me goosebumps every time I listen to it. And so I really think it's worth a listen for you to just check it out and see how you feel about it. So the link for that one is in the description. The second solo I wanted to talk about is by my guy Guthrie Govin, who I've already talked a little bit about on this channel, that I think he is the most technically skilled guitarist alive. The way that he can seamlessly move between all genres, he seems the least inhibited by his technique of any musician that I've heard of. And I know that sentence was a little cringy, but <laughs> whatever. So this, this solo that I found, I've, I've never heard the actual song off of a record or anything. I'm not sure what the context of it is. And it comes in with like some, some weird kind of philosophical guys talking like, Sounds like they're finishing up some kind of weird talk, I don't know. But it's called Regret Number Nine. That one's in the description too. But this, I'd say, this one and the, and the last one are both, you know, on the scale of technique and emotional content, both like nine or 10. And you can you can almost see as, he fin as Guthrie finishes the solo that he feels like drained. Like he just gave it everything that he has and he just kind of like slumps at the end. And I, I just, I find that really interesting because it really feels like, like he was channeling something there and it, it's just remarkable. But anyway, that one is definitely worth a listen and that is also in the comments, or I mean in the description. So lastly is a live version of one of my favorite songs of all time by a guitarist named Andy Timmons, who is also in the upper echelon in terms of technical ability. And this song in particular the emotional content and the technical content are both at an extreme high level. Pretty much all of what Andy Timmons does is of, a, of an extreme high level. But anyway, so this song is a journey. The song is called Cry For You, and it is, it's another one that gives me goosebumps every time. All three of these songs I listen to every single gig day as I'm like getting warmed up and getting ready to go, and it, it always sets me in the mood of just like, okay, it's time to rock, let's do this. So I thought that might be interesting. But these three, I think, are extremely valuable for your artistic mind to just digest and see how it makes you feel. At the end of the day, more than anything else, our job as guitarists is to make people feel stuff. I feel like these three solos always have an impact on me, even though I've heard them a thousand times. All right, guys, so let me know what you think about these three solos. If there are solos that you think are underrated that I should listen to or that the community should listen to, 
I'm, I'd really be interested. Leave that in the comments. So I appreciate you guys for stopping by. Tune in next week for another episode of Mike Needler Music. And uh, until then, keep rocking.